Hi, I'm Kylie, just another Army Vet. Welcome to another reaction video. Today's video comes from a channel called The Chronicles of India. This is the Battle of Haifa, all about how India saved Israel. Let's get to it. The tales of the First World War have been retold many times. But one account of bravery has often been overlooked, until recently. How a band of Indian cavalrymen won a battle in a land far away from home, overcoming modern weapons, armed with only lances is beyond imagination. Today, we tell their incredible and inspiring story. When the Great War broke out in 1914, India was still in the clutches of the British Empire. As a colony of the Raj, some of the states of India supplied troops to the British cause. Three such regiments, Hyderabad Lancers, Mysore Lancers and Jodhpur Lancers, were deployed in the Middle East fighting the Ottoman Turks. Were they forced to join the army and to help the Brits, or did they do that on their own accord? Uh, yes, the Ottoman Turks, I think they had some caliphate, and that was in Haifa, as far as I know at least. By mid-1918 the war was already nearing its end. And to completely defeat the Central Powers in the Middle East the Allies were in need of a port to land more troops and to keep their army resupplied. Haifa, with its harbor and railhead was deemed viable for this. With this in mind, the British 15th Cavalry Brigade, which was made up of the three cavalry regiments from India, was tasked with taking over Haifa. The brigade reached Afula on the morning of the 21st September. The next day Hyderabad lancers were detached to escort the prisoners from Lajan to Kirkur. Here, the brigade learned from the aerial reconnaissance that on the route to Haifa the enemy has more guns that they could handle. Hence the officers wanted to postpone the attack and wait for the reinforcements, but the two cavalry units of Jodhpur and Mysore were not happy with this and wanted to continue the attack regardless. The British officers tried to explain to them that the enemy was too strong and well fortified, but seeing their determination gave them permission to attack the Turks. Did they have any guns or just the Brits? If you know, please drop that in the comments. On the 23rd before sunrise the brigade started the march towards Haifa with the B Battery Honorable Artillery Company, which was the artillery unit of the British cavalry. At 10 a.m. they reached the village of Bullet Al Sheikh a few kilometers southeast of Haifa. Here they were shelled by enemy's guns atop Mount Carmel and fired on by machine guns and snipers on hills to the west of the village. By 11.30 a.m. the brigade had taken positions on the battlefield and enemy's heavy artillery and gunfire were being answered. In order to make any further advance towards Haifa, the enemy positions at the top of the Mount Carmel had to be captured for which a squadron of Mysore Lancers was sent with two machine guns. One squadron was sent to the north to capture the enemy position there in order to cut off any reinforcements from Akko. Remaining three squadrons took positions north of the village alongside B Battery HAC to engage the enemy troops nearby. Jodhpur Lancers held back awaiting the capture of Mount Carmel to start their mounted attack on Haifa. Soon a light cavalry squadron Sherwood Rangers Yeomanry joined the brigade, and it was directed to make an ascent to Mount Carmel to assist the squadron already on its way up. It reached the top on time to support the attack which was already underway and Mysore Lancers had captured many guns and prisoners, even after suffering huge losses in the battle and difficult ascent. At 2 p.m. Jodhpur Lancers were ordered to advance towards Haifa supported by artillery and machine gun fire. They marched unhindered against intense gunfire from the enemy. The enemy positions between Bullet Al Sheikh and Haifa were captured one by one despite the continuous barrage of bullets. Meanwhile the squadron of Mysore Lancers which had been detached north to cut off the enemy reinforcements from Akko made its move as soon as it saw the Jodhpur Lancers attack and captured the position. Almost simultaneously with the mounted attack from the east, the Mysore Lancers squadron on the top charged enemy position south of Haifa with only 15 men. So I'm not sure how many people are involved in the battle, but regardless, it does seem like 
the Indians are less in number by far. And the fact that they're on horseback with mostly just spears and lances and they're able to take a fortified position, including an elevated position with machine gun squads and snipers up on the mountain. I mean, that alone is very impressive and I don't even know how they accomplished that. Already, this is an amazing story. The Jodhpur Lancers entered Haifa, soon followed by Mysore Lancers and fighting continued here for a while. The battle was over soon by 3 p.m., and a large number of enemy soldiers hiding in the town were rounded up and arrested. More than the physical losses suffered by the Turks, the battle broke the morale of their army which resulted in the armistice being signed by not only the Turks but also Germany and Austria. What is more interesting? and of relevance today is the outcome of the battle which influenced the course of events. It hastened the end of the war by forcing the capitulation of Turkey and the end of the caliphate. The display of not only exceptional heroism but professional competence, tactical understanding of the battle and leadership by the Indians forced the British government to break racial barriers and open the way for grant of King's Commission as officers to Indians, which they had been resisting on the grounds that Indians lacked the leadership qualities to make good officers. Many years later at the end of the Second World War, there was a million-strong Indian Army force directly commanded by Indian officers, fully supportive of the independence movement and there was no way that the British could then hold on to India. Indian independence opened the floodgates to the grant of independence to all the colonies of the European powers the world over bringing to an end the age of imperialism and colonialism, thus ending another empire. The release from captivity of Abdul Baha, who was the leader of the much persecuted followers of the Baha'i faith, ensured that he was able to continue to spread his message. With his rescue, India established a unique connection with Baha'is and today they number about 6 million worldwide with a third of them being in India. For the Jews who lived outside their fatherland for over 2,000 years, the liberation of Haifa from the stronghold of Ottoman Turks by the Indian soldiers had a great significance. They welcomed the news with great joy amid revelries, celebrations, and festivities and began arriving in Haifa in large numbers from 1919 onward which eventually paved the way for the modern state of Israel. Thus, a small but brave group of Indian soldiers despite of being far away from their homeland and fighting in a hostile enemy territory, gave good account of themselves and left an indelible mark in the pages of world history. I don't understand why I was never taught this in history classes in college or in high school, because it seems like it is a very significant event, especially when it comes to India's independence. So two questions for you guys. One, did you learn about this battle in school? And two, what country are you from? Because I'm very curious to know about what countries actually acknowledge the significance of this battle. Anyway, my salute goes out to all the brave fighters in this battle. If you do want to watch another video on Indian heroism, then why don't you check out this video right here.